Hi everyone, this is Jake Sussman. I'm the Director of Customer Experience for Kinexus. Welcome to our Spring Updates webinar. This is actually the fourth webinar in our Platform Update series. Glad everyone could join today. So since our last Platform Updates webinar, we've had two major product releases. A bunch of really great features have been released, making it easier than ever to manage improvements in projects. Today I'm joined by Greg Jacobson, the CEO and co-founder and head of product at Kinexus. Greg's going to take us through some um, of the spring updates, and uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Greg. All right, well, let's kick this off. I cannot tell you how excited I am about some of the things that we released over the uh, over the the spring. We're going to actually talk about some of the biggest things that we released in in April. It might have snuck into the last webinar because we did that one about a month late. So if you've seen these before, bear with us. We actually have better examples of them than we did prior. And I think that we're discovering a lot of organizations are doing areas of CI continuous improvement that we didn't even know. And the more areas of the product that, that we release, we're finding out that people we didn't know, for example, that are doing Hoshin Conry and doing strategy deployment work are, are actually doing that. And, and it really, to me, just stresses the fact that this is an open communication dialogue. The more you're working with, with Jake and his team, the more we understand what problems you're having and the more we can make the product better than it is today. We put a huge amount of time into development. So uh, almost 90% of what we release now and what we're building is from direct feedback from you guys. So without further ado, let's get into the X matrix. What's so interesting is that when I started really building Kinexus and, and coding Kinexus, I'd never even heard of the words Hoshin Conry. And it was our customers that really introduced us and my entire team to a lot of these principles. Of course, Mark Rabin, who is our VP of Innovation and, and, and Customer you know, Services, um, has really been our lexicon, if you will, in making sure we're on the right path. And uh, X Matrix is a great example of that. Um, what we have here is actually an X Matrix view that can be put on any board, and almost everything you see here is completely configurable. And so you can control all of the, the words here. And of course, you can put your actual projects. You can put your improvements, if they're what needs to go in here, and all your metrics, as well as all the people that are related. All of these relationships are completely customizable by you guys. And I think if you're doing Hoshin work, if you're trying to manage your, your X matrices on an Excel spreadsheet buried somewhere, I would highly recommend you engage with uh, your account manager. Get this turned on. We, we don't have this default turned on because a lot of our customers aren't interested in this. Get this turned on in the system. And, and now the X matrix really becomes alive because you can actually click and boom, you're actually in the project that is shown on the X matrix. And if you want to actually see what the what the what the what the the metric is here, you can open it up and you're actually looking at the actual metric itself and of course if you don't know who any of these people are then you can just click on them and you get an idea of exactly who these people are in the system. Jake how are you seeing people use X Matrix so far? Well I think this is a great way to not only develop plans but also implement them. You'll notice we've we've kind of abandoned PowerPoint for, for this particular presentation and so we've, se we've seen a lot of customers who are utilizing X matrices run presentations and present their strategic and tactical plans uh, both from a development standpoint and an implementation standpoint to their to their um, stakeholders across the organization. So great way to visualize some some three year plans um, in a number of different ways. We're working with a number of consultants now who are big X matrix fans and they have been kind of injecting this in, in their in their clients. I'm so glad you brought this up. So one of the things you'll notice is that, and, and this actually came from one of our customers, that, that they had been internally challenged to stop using PowerPoint. PowerPoint, there's really, it's a non-value added step if you think about it. If you're gonna, if you're gonna present, if you're gonna have a conversation about, if you're gonna show people your continuous improvement work, why put an intermediate step to show that? Why not just go right into the system where it's all being visualized, where it's all being managed, and so we have uh, decided internally to see how much can we present. So we've just, we created a quick little board here. We have the agenda that we're gonna roll down in the top left here for the card, and we have created an example of all these improvements. So see, 
you know, consider it yourself if, if there's a way to, to present out of Kinexus. Next, we made some really big improvements to charts. I, I, I released and, and just really showed everyone just this huge foundational improvement that we had made to charts at the last user conference. And, and I said, we are going to be improving charts probably from here on out. And um, being able to do control charts and Pareto charts is part of that. So let's just take a look at this control chart here. So control charts, so one of the things I think that is exciting about putting your data in Kinexus is that instead of the data sitting on an Excel spreadsheet buried in a drive, you're going to hear that that, I talk about that a lot, not because I've made that up, because that's the, the vast majority of our customers, that's where their data is sitting, and they, they send out emails showing it. You now have your data, it's in Kinexus, and it actually kind of becomes alive. So you, you can see who owns the data, you can actually comment on the data, and in this case, when you're doing a control chart, if the chart that you're, you're running or the data that you're running goes out of control, like right here with this, this red point, it can actually set triggers and notifications to people that are interested in this chart. So you can follow a chart, and if any time this chart gets out of control, it'll go as part of your notification process, as part of your digest. This is really powerful uh, to get pulled into when you need to look at it. If a process is in control, far less interesting than, than knowing if a process is out of control. You can set up um, filters based on whether a chart is in control or out of control. There's a lot of options behind the scenes on how this chart looks and, and how it's, it's working. I, I think this goes to the point of, of making data truly actionable. So when there needs to be a, a nudge or there needs to be action taken relative to a particular KPI or metric, these notifications that are generated out of charts are really helpful in doing so. Great, so Kinexus has told us, all right, data's out of control limits, I get it. I'm going to go ahead and reach out to the, the people that own this process. On the same lines, we have, you've always been able to, to do Pareto charts in Kinexus, but now we actually calculate and organize and sort all of the categories for you. And so this line here, this black line has been uh, placed and calculated by Kinexus. All the actual person has done in to, to create this chart is, is simply put the categories and the data in and then it'll sort by the most frequent to the less frequent. And all that's done right here when you are creating a series, you simply click here and then one of the options is Pareto. So when you click Pareto, all of a sudden this chart knows it's a Pareto chart and it will go ahead and sort by most frequent to less frequent and it will create this automated accumulation percentage of whatever you're tracking. If you're using Pareto charts, I think this is going to make your life a lot easier. All right. Next. Copy anything nested within a project. Okay, so this is actually one of these kind of lower level, something we probably wouldn't show when someone's looking at the system for the first time. But once you start becoming a heavy user and you are really setting up departments with projects or you're maybe doing a lot of certification classes and you're repeating a lot of the projects, we were getting feedback that it would be really great if when you copy a project or you copy an improvement that all the nested things below it will copy. So for example, let's say when you're doing a Kaizen event that you always do a certain number of improvements or a certain number of tasks now. Now you get this option when you click on copy where am I seeing copy? Well, if, if copy would have been there, you would have seen it. Where did we, was it here? Oh, it was Gemini. Mm -hmm. When you click on copy, obviously didn't have the right permissions in that one, um, you get these three options here for copy tasks, copy improvements, and copy projects. And so, makes it really easy if y'all are doing, when we're talking about standardizing, one of the things that Kinex has helped people do is to standardize. Um, this is one of those, those areas where, where we can really help standardize how those, those things are done. Yeah, so this supports a number of different use cases and we're, we're seeing our customers utilize this feature a lot here lately. So if uh, in the case of lean certification or lean training initiatives where you're teaching the same lean best practices over and over to different groups or cohorts, 
of learners, this is a great way to standardize and easily replicate coursework. We're also seeing this support like a PDSA cycle or a PDCA cycle where you're running the same steps and following the same standardized process in a number of different departments. Um, the third kind of um, really a use case that this supports is, is the service line. So working with a lot of healthcare systems that have locations or entities set up um, where they might have a cardiac service line at multiple hospitals. This is helping them really standardize and create the same exact type of project work to deploy throughout those, those multiple locations. Great. I think if, if you're a heavy user of Kinexus, you're going to find that to be a very helpful feature that we added. So we have added some really interesting things to the tree and list view of projects and improvements, and that's the status bar. So this took quite a bit of work for our development team to get this right and optimally performed, but you'll see that we have an improvement status bar here. You can not only do an improvement status bar, but you could do a project status bar or a task status bar right here on the line, but this gives you a really quick way to look down your projects and to see what the status of each of the improvements that are, for example, nested in the Gemini, Gemini product line. And this is a, an actionable status bar. So if I want to, act, if I want to see what the, the new improvement is here, I can click right on it and I'm, I'm actually seeing and, and getting that granular view. Kind of in conjunction with the, the status bar, we've also added a complete percentage. Gives you an idea if you want to see how completed a project or, or an improvement is, you get a nice little snapshot right here with this, this, this bar line kind of showing that. And I will we'll let you know that you can control all your columns here. So for example, if I wanted to you know, add a project complete or, or add a project status bar to this, I can easily do that um, with a click of a button. One of the things that, you know, as you're talking with customers, Jake, I've heard you mention that people don't realize the power of, of, this, of this card right here with regard to how refined you can control it. So I have, with this card, controlled the exact columns I want. All my column options are right here, okay? And then you'll notice, though, when I put it into expand mode, it had a different series of columns here. And so it, this gives you some really interesting power to control the viewing experience of what you're seeing in a card versus what you're seeing when you expand it. It's almost like quick summary in card, now let's get into it and do some work. So let me show you, if you haven't discovered this, when you're looking at the view right here, if you click on the tree, you get this interface which shows you what you want the view for the card to be when it's in card mode and then what do you want to show when it's in expanded mode and so you can see we've got different things here listed just to, to show that example now when you configure this and when you make your selections it'll obviously remember that and uh, this is all about kind of creating this optimized workflow experience we talk about you know, technology has to blend into the background we can't be the slaves of technology technology has to be the slaves to us these are the kind of features that, that create that kind of optimal uh, as click friction free experience that you can get. And I think that's even worth reviewing how we got there one more time. From a customer experience standpoint, this is a question we get a lot. I've, I've configured a card. I might want to switch what I'm, what I'm seeing, what order I'm seeing things in, and then I want it to stick, right? So Greg, if you want to go through how we got to that menu, it's, it's clicking the edit wheel, it's view, it's clicking the tree view, and then you'll have a list come up for a card view and for expand view. And all the boxes that are checked here will display in either view. But uh, uh, what, what might not be as, as apparent is that you can actually change the order of these things that, uh, that they're, in which they're displayed. So maybe if I only wanted to see title and how, how many tasks were complete in a particular project, we could um, only have those two boxes checked and those two would be. Um, all that you saw on the card. So really powerful feature in terms of customizing, in terms of um, standardizing across multiple locations. If you are um, a board admin or a, a system admin that, and, and responsible for building boy, boards and deploying them out to, to end users at, at your organization. And I think that's really the responsibility of the CI team, right? I mean, 
the CI and process improvement team, they spend probably 100% of their day thinking about continuous improvement. You're trying to get the rest of the organization, not necessarily spending 100% of their time, but spending just a certain percent of their time. If you go back to Mizaki and Mai's book, um, Kaizen, which, which if you haven't read, highly recommend. It's what introduced me to the, the, all these improvement principles. But he breaks down how the what percent time, for example, senior leaders, middle management, and frontline leaders should be, should be spending doing um, improvement work. And it, it clearly, it changes. And so if you're thinking about, well, how do I get middle level management to, to spend some of their day improving the work that they're doing, they're not going to become an expert on, on the Kinex system. It's going to be up to the CI team to create those default boards that they want and to kind of roll those boards out to the individual locations. And then from there, if tweaks need to be made to optimize, for example, for the factory shop floor versus the finance department, they at least have a starting point and, and, and tweaks can be made from there. But it, it's really, it's, it's not the front line's responsibility to, to be able to understand how to, how to really kind of configure and manipulate the system. Um, it's just too much to ask for them. So, so kind of keep that in mind. And I, and I will say um, an internal initiative that we're working on here at Kinexus is to be able to provide some really great visual examples of what's possible from a board perspective. It's a big initiative of the, of the customer experience team to develop a library of templates, a library of boards that customers can have access to. And it's, it's great to talk through conceptually how these boards will look and be displayed. It's, an, it's even better to see them in action. So coming soon is, is a demo environment for our customers where you can come in and, and look at what's, what's possible and, and kind of uh, select what, what you'd like to go build in your own instance. So kind of on that topic, and I wanted to spend a lot of time here because the next feature I'm going to show you is relates to this card concept. So we have gotten so much positive feedback on the the card and the board. Um, and honestly, four four years ago, boards didn't even exist in Kinexus, if you can imagine. And now our customers are spending 90 to 95 percent of their time on boards. And because you can really optimize and create the exact visual experience you want. So in that same vein, what we've done here is actually give all of the features of the car manipulation and brought those right into the improvement as well. So I've got a project here that has 18 nested improvements and it used to be that, that really you didn't have very many options here. This was about the way you could see them. Now, if you take a look here, we have added a public and a personal option. So if you're a leader of a project, you're going to see this, this public option and you can switch views. So for example, if, if you really want to see this in Kanban view, you can switch it over to, to Kanban view. And now you have all of these improvements in Kanban view. If you want to switch that into Let's say you're not using the, the resolution submitted, or let's say let's say you want to see it in list view. You can switch that over into list view. And this will this will stay sticky and it will mean that everyone when they log into into this, they'll see it that way. And of course, if you in list view want to kind of dictate once again which columns are shown in the contracted versus the expanded view, you can do all that as well within here. And, and that, all those improvements went to nested projects, improvements, as well as into tasks, if um, a project or an improvement has tasks. All right, let's see what's next on our agenda. So the, the, Biggest theme, and, and, and I know that you're probably thinking, wow, that you showed some big things yet, but, but actually that's, act, that's not what the, the bulk of the dev team has been working on. Um, the, the bulk of the dev team has been working on something that we're really excited that we're going to be releasing at the user conference, and you're just going to have to be at the user conference to know what we're releasing. But part of that revolves around tasks, and we had to make a major overhaul with tasks. Tasks used to be their own entity, and we wanted to give tasks all of the features that projects and improvements 
have. So for instance, that includes being able to have bottleneck filters for tasks, being able to have task templates, so you could have different um, versions of tasks, being able to convert a project to a task, a task to an improvement, and um, any, any combination of that. Um, we wanted tasks to have Kanban view. We wanted to give tasks um, the ability to, to copy. So for example, here, we have created a card that is filtering tasks, and we have put it into Kanban view. This is something you couldn't do before. So if you have thought that tasks have been restrictive in the past, then I would, I would highly recommend, I would highly recommend that you take a look at tasks again. If you want to configure tasks to be a little bit different and you haven't been able to do that in the past, make sure that you reach out to them, this customer experience team and they can configure a task to be, but honestly, probably the biggest thing that we did with tasks is we made tasks standalone. And so now, oh, this person doesn't have permission to do it, but now you can have a task where if you have permission, you are able to create standalone tasks. Those tasks do not have to be a part of a project or an improvement. And uh, that's, that's a huge feature with regard to being able to manage kind of personalized work or, or manage some small unit of work. For example, hey, we need to set up a, you know, a meeting or something that kind of it, it doesn't really fit into the improvement or to the project area. So um, keep, keep that in mind. Yeah, I would say the two biggest new kind of uh, dynamics to tasks that are being utilized by customers are the standalone. So we can create a custom task with fields, with attributes to really um, be specific to the, the type of work being completed by that task, as well as the team function, right? So now, in the past, you had an author and an assign, assignee on the task. Now you have collaborators, you have followers, so it really opens up the potential for, for working on tasks collaboratively with, with, other, with other people at the organization. If you're, if you're kind of thinking about where are we and where, where we're heading, with regard to tasks, you can probably see that we're setting up kind of future integrations into whatever task system you're personally using, whether that's Outlook or, or a Google task. And we're kind of starting to lay that groundwork to be able to do some of that work down the line because we know that that part of, uh, you know, one of the, the, the next kind of arcs of Kinexus is going to be integrating whether it's data or whether it's into your calendaring or whether it's into your tasks, want to kind of become part of that ecosystem of your productivity tools that, that you're personally using. So that is getting a set up to be able to do all that down the future. So that gives a really nice snapshot of everything that's going, everything that we released in the spring. We have a super amazing release that's coming out in the next one to two weeks. Don't know if we're going to try to do it on this Saturday or next Saturday. Everyone's going to get a preemptive notification from Jake and team on, on that. And uh, there's going to be some really exciting things released on that. I'll, I'll let it be a surprise when, when, it, when you get notified about that. And keep in mind that if you haven't signed up for a user conference, I like to say, and, and don't take this the wrong way, but our best customers present to the user conference. And we really have um, well over 75% of our customers represented. The, the benefit really is to see what organizations are doing that I think are on the cutting edge of developing cultures of continuous improvement. They're the ones that recognize that technology can actually accelerate leadership behaviors and can make doing improvement processes simpler and easier. And they continually surprise us. It is, it's not your average continuous improvement or lean conference. I'll, right. I'll say that. I mean, this is, this is the definition of a peer group. These are other continuous improvement and process improvement professionals who are using an operating system on a day-to-day -day basis, sharing best practices, sharing cautionary tales, right? So it's a really, really valuable conference. Nothing but great feedback last year, and, and we're really excited to build on it this year. And 95% of the people that are at that conference are Kinex customers. We do send out a few select invitations to prospective customers that are um, getting very close to, um, to you know, signing up to be a partner with Kinexus. And so 95%, though, are people that, that are in the trenches with you guys 
that are kind of discovering how technology can be a part of their, their CI efforts. I will also say we have a great webinar coming up. So if you haven't taken a look at this, we have Strength in Numbers, Improving from the Bottom Up. It's going to be on July 27th, and it's going to be great. I think Mark is giving, giving this, this webinar. So make sure to go to the, you can find this, this is the registration page, but obviously if you go to kinexus.com, we have a huge webinar library um, right here under Learn. You can take a look at all the webinars in the past, and of course we have upcoming webinars. So if you go to the upcoming webinars, you can see here um, all of our upcoming webinars. But, but the next one is... I guess in two days. That's exciting. I'm looking forward to hearing right around that the corner. One. Well, that wraps things up. I think we've got um, five minutes, four minutes that we're going to give back to you on this beautiful Tuesday. So as always, these webinars will be on demand. You can share these with other folks in your organization. Thanks again, everyone, for joining, and we'll, we'll see you on the next one. And uh, like I always like to say, there is no better day than today to keep spreading continuous improvement. Best of luck, everyone.